by a group assured of success. That is my opinion. Text 37. Arjuna Vacha Ayatiha Shraddha Yaupeto Yoga Chalita Manasaha Aprapya Yoga Samsidhim Kam Gatim Krishna Gachati. Arjuna said, O oh Krishna, what is the destination of the unsuccessful transcendentalist who is in the beginning takes through the process of self-realization with faith, but who later desists due to the worldly mindedness and thus does not attain perfection in mysticism? Text 38. Kachin Kachin no bea vibrashtas Chinna Chinna Brahm Ivanashyati Apratisto Mahabaho Vimudo Brahmana Pati. O mighty armed Krishna, does not such a man who is bewildered from the path of transcendence fall away from both spiritual and material success and perish like a, like a riven cloud with no position in any sphere? Text 39. Etan me sam shayam Krishna chetum arhasi asheshataha tvad anyaha sam shayasya chetana hi upapadhyate. This is my doubt, O Krishna, and I ask you to dispel it completely. But for you, no one is to be found who can destroy this doubt. Text 40. Shri Bhagavan Vata Partha Neva Hayad Namutra Vinashas Tasya Vidyate Nahi Kalyana Krutkasche Durgatim Tat Gachati. The Supreme Personality of Godhead said, Son of Pritha, a transcendentalist engaged in auspicious activities, does not meet with destruction either in this world or in the spiritual world. One who does good, my friend, is never overcome by evil. Text 41. Pra you can scroll down a bit, please. Prapya punya kritam lokan ushitva shashvati samha shuchi nam shri matam gehe yoga bhristo abhijayate. The unsuccessful yogi, after many, many years of enjoyment on the planet of the pious living entity, is born into a family of a righteous people or into a family of a rich aristocracy. Text 42. Atva yogi nam eva kule bhavti dhimatam etadhi durlabhataram loke jan yad idrisham. Or, if unsuccessful, after long practice of yoga, he takes his birth in a family of a transcendentalist who are surely great in wisdom. Certainly, such a birth is rare in this world. Text 43. Tatra tam buddhi sam yogam labte porva dehikam yatate chatato buya sam siddho kuru nandana. On taking such a birth, he revives the divine consciousness of his previous life and he again tries to make further progress in order to achieve complete success, O son of Kuru. Text 44. Purva bha bhesena te neva riya te he avashopi saha jigyasur api yogasya shabd brahma tivartate. By virtue of the divine consciousness of his previous life, he automatically becomes attracted to the yogi, yogic principles, even without seeking them. Such an inquisitive transcendentalist stands always above the ritualistic principles of the scriptures. Text 45. Prayatna diatmanastu yogi sam shudha kil bhishaha anek janma sam siddha tatto yati param gatim. And when the yogi engages himself with sincere endeavor in making further progress, being washed of all contaminations, then ultimately achieving perfection 
after many many births of practice he attains the supreme goal text 46 tapsva bhyo dikho yogi gyadni bhyo pi mato dikha karam bhyash chadiko yogi tasmad yogi bhav arjuna a yogi is greater than the ascetic greater than the empiricist and greater than the fruitive worker therefore o arjuna in all circumstances be a yogi x47 yogi naam api sarvesham madgate nantar atmana shraddhavan bhajate yo maam same yukta tamo mataha and of all the all yogis the one with great faith who always abides in me think of me within himself he and render transcendental loving service to me he is the most intimately united with me in yoga and is the highest of all that is my opinion hari krishna hari krishna hari krishna prabhu ji thank you for giving us the opportunity thank, thank you prabhu ji thank you prabhu ji hari krishna so today we are going to be discussing text 31 सर्वभूता who is practicing meditation on the super soul sees within himself the plenary portion of krishna as vishnu with four hands holding conch shell wheel club and lotus flower the yogi should know that vishnu is not different from krishna krishna in the form of super soul is situated in everyone's heart furthermore there is no difference between the innumerable super souls present in the innumerable heart of living entities nor is there a difference between a krishna conscious person always engaged in the transcendental loving service of krishna and a perfect yogi engaged in meditation on the super soul the yogi in krishna consciousness even though he may be engaged in various activities while in material existence remains always situated in krishna this is confirmed in the bhakti rasamrit sindhu 1.2.187 of shila rupa goswami nikhilashwa api avastha su jeevan mukta sa uchchate a devotee of the lord who all lord always acting in krishna consciousness is automatically liberated in the narad pancharatra this is confirmed in this way dekkaladi anavichine krishna ye cheto vidaye cha tanmayo bhavati shipram jeeva brahmani yojaye by concentrating one's attention on the transcendental form of krishna who is all pervading and beyond time and space one becomes absorbed in thinking of krishna and then attains the happy state of transcendental association with me krishna consciousness is the highest stage of trance in yoga practice this very understanding that krishna is present as paramatma in everyone's heart makes the yogi faultless the vedas gopala tapani upanishad 1.21 confirms this inconceivable potency of the lord as follows ekopi san bahutha yo vabhati although the lord is one he is present in innumerable hearts as many Similarly in the Smriti Shastra it is said Eka eva paro Vishnu sarva vyapi na samsaya Aishwarya rupam ekam cha surya vat bahu deyate bahu deyate Vishnu is one and yet he is certainly all pervading by his inconceivable potency in spite of his one form he is present everywhere as the sun appears in many places Oh my god just give me one second devotee Om ajnanate mirandasya gyananjana shalakaya chakshurun militam yena tasmay shri gurave namaha नमाम विष्णु पादाय कृष्ण पृष्ठाय भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदांता स्वामीति नामिने नमस्ते सरस्वती देवे गौरवाणी प्रचारिने निर्विशेषा शून्यवादी पाश्चात्य देशतारिने
वंशकल्पातरुभ्य कृपा सिंधु पतिता पावनेभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नम जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैता गदाधर श्रीवासादी गौर वृंदा हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 रामा हरे रामा राम रामा हरे 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 कृष्णा सो ट्रांसलेशन वंस अगेन ऑफ दिस ब्यूटीफुल वर्स दिस वर्स इज टीचिंग अस हाउ अ डिवोटी एक्सपीरियंस इज सुपर सोल सच अ योगी हु एंगेजेस इन द वर्शिपेबल सर्विस ऑफ द सुपर सोल knowing that i and the super soul are one remains always in me in all circumstances so let's look at some key points from the purport of the prabhupad so we see here that the 6.31 text text 31 32 mentions the actions of a perfect yogi somebody who is following this process which we have been hearing in the last few verses these two words culminate in the what are the actions of such a yogi and this particular verse the theme is realizing krishna to be the origin of the super soul the perfect yogi worships and serves him and thus always remains in him in all circumstances so a person who has come to such a stage where he has now complete understanding that he is atma and there is parmatma super soul situated in his heart and he is worshiping that personality supreme personality of godhead in the form of super soul so that is one of the actions of such a yogi which has been explained in this particular verse here and especially now we will see how a yogi sees the super soul and then prabhupad picks up some really nice important points on the purport which we will we'll, we'll talk about it and how he sees that within himself there is a plenary portion of krishna as vishnu with four hands so who will give me an example of a personality in shrimad bhagavatam who was meditating on exact same form of the lord and he had the darshan of the same form with the four hand forms the true maharaj Absolutely. Who was that? Man Mohini. Man Mohini Mata Ji. Thank you so much. That was that is correct. So if you remember, in the initial stage of Dhruv Maharaj practicing the yogic process is similar to what has been explained in this chapter of Bhagavad Gita. It was a lot of neti, like he had to give up a lot of things. He wasn't eating too much. Then he was just gradually he stopped eating. Like fruits, then he went to leaves. From leaves, he went to water, and then he even stopped having water. And because of such concentration on the super soul he even was managed to even stop the air in the higher planetary systems because of his intensity of the meditation and the demigods were really worried you know what is going to happen uh and we see here in this meditation when dhruv maharaj first he perfected his meditation by actually perceiving perceiving the same super soul in the form of four armed vishnu in his heart so he was completely at a, at a state where which is very nicely explained that he was mat kate anantar atmana he was completely ex, experiencing the super soul situated in his heart and after perfecting that stage all of a sudden his his meditation broke and the reason it broke is because the same personality who he was experiencing inside was standing in front of him in the same four arm form in the form of vishnu and what are the four things lord vishnu holds in his four arms who will tell us anyone chakra gada chakra gada lotus no. flower that's it very good chakra gada shank and the lotus flower well done mata ji so that's what lord vishnu is holding in his hand and dhruv maharaj opens his eyes and he is right there and and we know that beautiful pastime that how when he appears dhruv maharaj is completely in ecstasy and immediately he becomes joyful but at the same time he becomes unhappy the reason he is joyful is because in that state anybody is joyful like bhagavad gita explains brahma bhuta prasanna atma na sochati na kanchati sama sarveshu bhuteshu mad bhakti labhate varam 
Sama Sarveshu Bhuteshu, a person in that state or in that consciousness is completely at a level where he's experiencing happiness, but nothing but happiness. And so similarly, that state Dhruv Maharaj had was happiness, but because he was self-realized by then, he was also experiencing some moroseness, some dissatisfaction in his heart for the very reason of him actually he came to the meditation. He was really thinking, why, why was why did I took this form of meditating on the Lord for the reason to acquire a, something so material, something so insignificant? And now he was saying, Lord, I do not need anything. You know, I I came to look for some, you know, broken glass pieces, Dhru Maharaj explained. But now I have the jewel in form of your beautiful body. I have your darshan, the four-handed form of Lord Vishnu, you know, with the shamantaka jewel. He's looking so beautiful. And Dhru Maharaj is in ecstasy. So the same form is being explained here. Let's have a look that how one sees within himself the plenary portion of Krishna as Vishnu with four hands holding conch shell, wheel, club, and lotus flower. And then it is Prabhupada goes on to explain that the yogi should know that Vishnu is non-different from Krishna who is present as super soul in everyone's heart. So who, whose manifestation is super soul? It's a quiz question. Is it Karuna Dakshai Vishnu? Is it Shiro Dakshai Vishnu? Or it is Garba Dakshai Vishnu? Karna, Karna Dakshai Vishnu. Shiro Dakshai Vishnu. Okay, so any any other guesses? Shiro Dakshai Vishnu Prabhuji. That's correct. So the super soul is a manifestation of the Shiro Dakshai Vishnu. So Karana Dakshai Vishnu, Karana Dakshai is lying on the Karana Ocean. But it is the Shiro Dakshai Vishnu who is lying on the causal Ocean. And he is the one who is manifesting in the form of super soul in everyone's heart. And then there is no difference between the innumerable super souls present in the innumerable hearts of living entity. So the super soul which is situated in Girish Prabhu's heart is exactly the same super soul situated in my heart. There is no difference between the two, these two super souls. Such a nice, like look at our philosophy, so crystal clear Prabhupada is explaining. I mean, we are so blessed to have these wonderful literatures and then the, on top of that, not just the literature, the as it is translation and then the purport by Srila Prabhupada. So basically there is no difference between a Krishna conscious person engaged in the transcendental service of Krishna and a perfect yogi engaged in meditation on the super soul. And what Prabhupada is trying to say here is a devotee who is practicing Krishna consciousness versus someone who has taken the little bit, well, quite a lot difficult path of going down the route of Ashtanga Yoga and various yoga practices and finally risen to such a level where he's experiencing the super soul, fundamentally there is not much difference between a devotee, that devotee and a yogi. They are both are situated on the same level. So let's take an example um, of somebody from Srimad Bhagavatam. Sorry, my phone is completely keeps going off. Let me put it on silent. I normally do. Okay, here we are. Right. So, if you look at Srimad Bhagavatam and we look at a personality like, let's take Dhruv Maharaj for example. So, he was a yogi who turned into a devotee later on because of the personal association of the Lord. He got what bhakti is and he, and mainly the main reason behind Dhruv Maharaj becoming a devotee is actually his spiritual master Narad Muni. Then you look at the devotee, let's say, let's look at a devotee who is Haridas Thakur in Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's pastime. He is also engaged in Krishna consciousness and practicing the bhakti in a very rigid way, in a very, very sincere way. So much so that, that he's such a, at such a platform that even a beautiful prostitute who comes to derail him from his path or, 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 or distract him from his practice is not able to do so because he's so strongly situated. The prostitute is saying that, oh, Haridas, look at your body. or oh, look at how handsome you are. I, I, I long to be in your company. I want to be in your association. And only a dhira, somebody with a steady mind, will be able to look at the prostitute and say, oh, my dear friend, I will certainly fulfill your desire. But what it is, is that I've taken a vow to chant, you know, certain number of rounds, three lakh names every day. 
So, and I haven't finished my quota yet. So if you can wait till fin you finish your quota and then I will be in a position to serve you. And then the prostitute thinks, wow, he's ready. And then she sits there and she's hearing the holy name and hearing the holy name and hearing the holy name. And then she goes back to that Muslim Nawab and says, the Nawab says, where are we with it? Almost there. He's almost ready. He just told me and I'm going to go tomorrow and that's it. You can be ready to send your people and catch him, you know. And then the same thing happens. And then again, third day she comes back. But after the third night when she stays over, she's completely transformed. Actually, the process of transformation had already begun on day one. But because of our conditioning, we are not able to realize it takes a while for us to that whole thing to sink in our mind and in our heart. And then she was completely changed, transformed. Haridas Thakur left that place. She took the that place, started chanting and became a wonderful Vaishnavi and went back to the spiritual world. So just trying to bring a draw a contrast between these two personalities that that they are almost on the same level. In, you'll see in other places Prabhupada emphasizing because Vaishnava is the highest, a devotee is the highest. He's higher than the yogi because he's driven by the sweetest taste of the pastimes of, of the Lord, whereas the yogi is driven towards depending on his austerities actually. So that's why the position of the bhakti yogi versus a regular yogi or ashtanga yogi is much higher. And then Prabhupada goes on to explain that yogi in Krishna consciousness, even though he may be entangled, sorry, engaged in various activities in material world, remains always situated in Krishna. Reference Bhakti Rasamrit Sindhu 1.2.187, where Prabhupada is quoting, and then it is mentioned here. A devotee acting in Krishna consciousness is already liberated, like Narad Pancharatra explained, Dik Kaladi, by concentrating one's attention on the transcendental form of Krishna, who is all pervading and beyond time and space one becomes absorbed in thinking of Krishna and then one attains the happy state of transcendental association with him. So first, first comes absorption in Krishna's pastime and then comes our state of consciousness which is then completely absorbed and happy because we, have, we are in transcendental association with the Lord. So this is the status of a bhakti yogi explained by Srila Prabhupada. How he gets attracted? Through the beautiful transcendental form and the pastimes, qualities and the various paraphernalia of the Lord he become intensely attracted to the, to the Lord. And then it is explained, uh, later on Prabhupada goes on to explain that how Krishna consciousness is the highest stage of trance towards the end of that purport in yoga practice or understanding that Krishna is present as Paramatma in everyone's heart. Arjun, uh, what is that verse? Uh, um, uh, Arjuna, uh, Nishtati, it's not coming to my mind that word. Uh, if, if it comes to anyone's mind, let me know where Krishna is telling Arjuna that I'm situated in everyone's heart as a super soul. So the point is that he's there in everyone's heart and Vishnu is non different from Krishna. And he makes the yogi faultless. And then Prabhupada quotes Gopala Tapani Upan 2.1 where it is mentioned that the inconceivable potency of the Lord is explained that how although the Lord is one, he's present in innumerable heart as many. And then Smriti Shastra is quoted that how Vishnu is one and yet he is certainly all pervading. So this is how one in conclusion comes to the state of worshipping the Lord as a super soul. It's a very, very high stage. Don't get me wrong. But a devotee or a bhakti yogi is situated at such a platform that it is much sweeter. It's much intense and it's much nicer because he's so much driven in madness with love with the Lord because of his various pastimes especially of his childhood and and the pastimes which are which he enacted in Vrindavan. And that's why uh, Vrindavan is considered the topmost dham among all the dhams. And because it's the intensity of the pastimes which the Krishna has actually performed. And within Vrindavan, it is explained that Mathura is superior in Radhakund. In, sorry, in uh, Nectar of Instruction, Srila Rupa Goswami ex gives a category of how the Braj, the Vrindavan is the most auspicious dham of all the dhams and within Vrindavan, Mathura is more superior, is, is superior. And then because Krishna was born there, then but higher than Mathura is Vrindavan. And the reason Vrindavan is higher because of the beautiful pastimes the Lord enacted in Vrindavan. And then Rupa Goswami goes on to explain that higher than Vrindavan is actually Govardhan. Because in Govardhan, Krishna did even more intimate pastimes because he was able to absorb 
and completely absorb himself at least for those seven days you know being exclusively with the gopis and the various cowherd men and the friends such an intimate leela he did in govardhan and then rupa goswami doesn't stop there he said even higher than govardhan is radha kund which is non different to shrimati radha rani and this kund is so dear to krishna actually that's why it is considered because of the most intimate pastimes radha kund is the topmost planet in all the planets so now that for some reason i wasn't intending to speak about radha kund or vrindavan but since it has come to my mind i have some uh, good news for you all would you like to hear and see the good news yes prabhu ji yes okay, prabhu ji yes prabhu ji yes, please yes please okay five devotees want to say yes and the others i'm not sure so yes, you can please. either you can either close your eyes or your ears mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yes please yes, please okay all right yes, here please. we go yes prabhu so yes, let please. me share uh, an encouraging news with all of you uh by shila pro by my guru maharaj's mercy i'm looking to start a new venture um in my life which is very close to my psychophysical nature and what i have been doing in the past um bear with me let me download this because it's not uh there we are yeah so i have been as you know my background is travel and hospitality and if you remember i all i always used to tell as a child it will be nice if we go on a yatra together so i'm very delighted to introduce this wonderful retreat um I, i'm hoping to do a few of these retreats throughout the year both for the devotees audience and as well as for people who are completely new in krishna consciousness or from the western side of the world who are mayapur various places of of related to krishna actually and his various pastimes but i thought let me do a little trial and i spoke to some devotees uh, my close friends and i said i'm planning to do this would you like to come with me as a trial so that i can offer these services to others and they got very excited uh, so namrata mata ji is already saying hari bol and she seems very excited so dear devotees um, i think the download is downloading here we are yes it's ready so i should be able to share my screen with all of you here we are so very happy and delighted to present to all of you the members of the chat uh, a beautiful retreat uh, i'll be taking on uh, to devotees to vindavan this year any guesses when am i planning to take all of you or whoever would like to come with me you see damodar month oh my goodness what kartik month yes it kartik is a kartik month. month so we are going to go and we are going to appreciate vrindavan dham a journey through the land of divine love and how we are going to do it we are going to do it no sorry the question is when we are going to do it we are going to do it on 13 to 29th of october so this is the half term in the kartik the two weeks obviously if you if any one of you have children you may lose one day of the school which is the 13th of 14th of october because we are flying out on the 13th october evening uh from london heathrow and what is the retreat about chandra chaitanya prabhu would you like to tell us read this paragraph and then girish prabhu you can read the second paragraph tell us what is what is the retreat about prabhu okay the word dam is used to refer to an abode or residence of the lord the most prominent of these is vrindavan dham since it is the place where the supreme lord shri krishna personally appeared on this planet to enjoy past times of divine love with his devotees and attract the lost souls in this material world back to his side which is where we all truly belong thank you prabhu girish prabhu could you please read the second paragraph for us yeah sure prabhu ji hari krishna visiting the past time places within the dham is a very effective way to deepen our connection and personal relationship with the lord during the retreat this will be achieved primarily through shravanam hearing and kirtanam chanting glorifying in other words the focus of the retreat will be an 
on hearing about the places and pastimes from spiritually realized devotees, not just seeing them with our eyes. So we will be taking the association of some devotees who have been either living in Vrindavan or who are very much advanced in this process of Krishna consciousness. And that may very well include one or two Prabhupada disciples. There could be surprises. I can't share much about it because I'm still working out on the on the on the details. But all I can say is you will only be benefited immensely in your Krishna consciousness. So here we are. We are gonna go to Vrindavan. And what will be the let's hear what is the importance of actually going to Vrindavan and performing some acts of devotional service. So if I can have uh, Manmohini Mataji, could you read us the first paragraph and the first text? Kartik meditation. The retreat will be taking place in the special month of Kartik. Here are some quotes that uh, illustrate the incredible spiritual benefit that we can gain by visiting the Dham during the Kartik. Please read Jeeva. text 169. The month of Kartik, when Lord Hari enjoyed his Damodar pastime in Mathura, delights Lord Vaikuntha, Vishnu. Spending the month of uh, Kartik in Mathura allows one to attain the supreme desti destination. This is not me speaking. You will see at the bottom of this page who is actually giving this benediction and how, how it turns out to be so magical and true actually in the month of Kartik. Okay, who would like to read the next beautiful text? Can I read Prabhuji? Yes, Vankar Prabhu, by all means. Text 172, residence in Mathura during Kartik is a rare attainment for humans to they who worship him there and then the Lord gives their original spiritual forms. Thank you, Krishna. Thank you. Who would like to read the next one, text 176? Even yes, reading Prabhuji. them is so purifying. Yes, Prabhuji. Yes, Santosh Mataji, Hare Krishna. Please Hare Mataji. Krishna, text 176. The perfect atonement to purify the sins of a lifetime is to worship Lord Dhamodar in Mathura during Kartik. Hare Krishna. Yeah, yeah. Next. May I read? Yes, Yashwini Mataji, please go ahead. Durlapu Bhakti Yoga Yogomi Mana Vashya Vishya Yakaha Kartike Mathu Rayam Chavratenda Lena Shri Krishna said, Pure devotional service to me, which because it places me under my devotee's dominion, is very difficult to attain, is easily attained by following this vow in Mathura during Kartik. So you Mathura get, Mahatmya. you get, you attain, sorry, yeah, Mathura Mahatmya by Srila Rupa Goswami. Mm -hmm. So just by performing some act of devotional service, firstly, it gets multiplied thousand times when you're in Vrindavan. And all these benedictions you get when you are in Vrindavan performing Kartik. Let's look at some locations we are going to cover. Let's have a quick volunteer who's going to read about Vrindavan for us. Let's meditate on Vrindavan today. Can I read from? Yes, Krishna? yes, Mataji. Hare Krishna. Vrindavan. Vrindavan. The town of Vrindavan is situated on the banks of the river Yamuna in the forest of Rindavan, which is one of the 12 main forests in the wider area of Russia. Within the town are over 5,000 temples, including those that were established by the six Goswamis. Many of the important places where Krishna performed his childhood pastimes can be found there. Haribol, Vrindavan Dham Ki Jai. Okay. Nandagao, who would like to tell us about Nandagao? Please keep reading someone who has not read. Yes, Nandagao. Situated upon Nandeshwar Hill, the town of Nandagao was home to Krishna and Balram for several years and is the location of Nandamarad's palace. Jai. So we will also go to Nandagao. Who would like to read about the glorious Govardhan Hill? I can I, read. I, Go ahead, Mataji. Mataji, okay. Govardhan. Upon the slopes of Govardhan Hill, Krishna enjoyed countless loving pastimes with his closest associates, and he famously held the entire hill on the little finger of his left hand for seven days when he was just a boy. Jai. 
We are going to go to Barsana. Who will read about the Barsana? I'll read. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Barsana. During her childhood years, Srimati Radharani resided at the palace of her father, Rishabhanu Maharaj, which is located in the enchanting land of Barsana. Many intimate pastime places can be found there. Aribo, we'll get to go to Barsana and guess what? Where are we going? We're going to Gurukul. Prabhuji, can I read? Not Gurukul, Gokul. Sorry. <laughs> go ahead, Mother. Hare, Hare, Hare Krishna, Prabhuji. Krishna's earliest childhood pastimes took place in the town of Gokul. After living there for about three years, the family moved to the forest of Rindavan due to daily attacks from demons. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Now, the last place we're going to, there are two places and they're extremely, extremely special. Let's have some guesses. Where are we going? Radhakund. Radhakund, we will cover when we are doing Govardhan. We might go to Govardhan twice actually during the retreat. But let's see um, what are the next two. They're outside Vrindavan. That place is also called Gupta Vrindavan actually. Let's see who knows this. Jaipur. Who said Jaipur? Um, Prabhuji uh, Shabani. Hare Krishna Mataji, you got it. We're going to go to Jaipur and Karoli because Jaipur and Karoli has the original deities of our Goswami. So who hasn't read today? Please read about Jaipur and Karoli. Can I read Prabhupada, please? Yes, uh, Rasulika yes. Mataji, go ahead. Jaipur and Karoli. Although Krishna did not perform pastimes there, <clears throat> the cities of Jaipur and Karoli have special significance for his devotees because the original presiding deities of Vrindavan can be found there. They were moved a few centuries ago to protect them from Mughal soldiers. Radha Govinda Ji and Radha Gopinath reside in Jaipur and Radha Madan Mohan reside in Karoli. Amazing. Thank you. So we will also be going to Jaipur and Karoli because the po most powerful powerhouse of all the deities is in Karoli, which is Radha Madan Mohan. They are Sambandha deities. You know, there is Sambandha, our relationship. Then there is Abhedya, the process uh, on how we operate in that relationship. And finally, Prayojan on how we achieve the goal is the Radha Gopinadi. So we will... It is said in one day, if you can somehow manage to have the darshan of all these three deities, which are quite far, you know, from Rindavan, we have to travel four hours on a coach. It will be a nice AC coach. We will be going and having Karoli, Radha, Madan, Mohan, Darshan, have Prashadam there. And then we go to Jaipur and same evening, if Krishna allows and if we are able to go, we'll have darshan of Radha, Govindji and Gopinath. That means we have seen the complete body of Krishna and the three most powerful deities in our line, actually. I myself, although I lived in Jaipur for a couple of years and I've been to Vrindavan for many years, actually, and this is the reason I've taken up this, this service, that... I never had a chance to, to go to Karoli. The road was quite bad. Now the road has been done and I'm super excited to go and take many devotees to this wonderful place of Jaipur and Karoli. Now, obviously the next question must be coming into your mind. Okay, what is included in the trip? So here is here it is. There is a package which I have put together for all the devotees. I already have many devotees because I only sent this out this afternoon and I wanted to first give you the opportunity because they were close friends who were wanting to already go. So I had to share with them. But after that, I'm sharing with all of you because you're very close to me and I want to give all of you this opportunity. So what the package would include that there'll be a direct return flights between London Heathrow and Delhi. Most likely we'll be departing at 7.15 p.m. or a little later. I'll confirm depending on the airline, but on 13th of October, on this is a Thursday evening. So the airport transfers between Delhi and Vrindavan will be covered. The retreat in itself will be 11 day, but the total stay I will be taking care of all of you will be 15 nights in Vrindavan plus and one night in Jaipur. So you will be there for 15 nights altogether. And within that, there'll be another one more, I mean, one night, which we will be staying in Jaipur because we are visiting Karoli and Jaipur. And retreat will be 11 day, which means every day we'll be going to a place these days and hearing a lot of hearing and chanting in the evening. There'll be sessions. We will hopefully have our own hall and own one place where we will all be staying like a family. There'll be a lot of Kirtan chanting in the month of Karthik and a lot of Hari Katha and hopefully reading from Bhagavatam as well. And then we will travel to Jaipur and Karoli. We will, the, the that will be covered as well. Local travel during the retreat, when we go to Govardhan, Varsana, all these places will be covered in the package. 
and your prashadam arrangements will be completely taken care of breakfast lunch and there will be a light dinner light dinner because we want to get up early engage in the service of krishna have a light dinner and go to bed there will be daily guided uh, trips during the retreat so i'll have either it will be myself or some senior devotees who will be taking us to a few places and telling us about those places there will be some guest speakers i'll be inviting senior devotees so we get to hear from sadhus and then there will be some Harinam in, in the in the Dham actually. And if we get an opportunity to give out some books in Hindi, in Braj, that will be even nicer if we can. And we will also be doing a pre-retreat reading on uh, some glories of Srimad Bhagavatam from certain books which are given by either Srila Prabhupada disciples or some quotes which we will put together and we'll read about them so we can develop a really nice mood before we reach Vindavan. And there will be a travel tips document. I will be sharing with you some suggestion what to take, what not to take. So you have that document handy. And we will put together a detailed itinerary of daily where are we going to go, which places for, for all of you, all of you actually. And uh, so this is what is not included in the package. Of course, you have to take care of your passport, visa, OCI, any travel insurance, passenger locator form, COVID-19. I'm pretty sure hopeful that by then there won't be any COVID-19 test because the world would have come to some kind of normality by then. Uh, we may have to live with COVID, but this year everybody is predicting that people would start traveling. And if you do not book now, then you, I mean, it will be so expensive that it will be so difficult to afford because everybody would want to go to Vindavan this year. And it won't include your transfers from here to the Heathrow airport. So you just have to take care for someone to drop you. Now, let me ask you, such a full board inclusive package, how much do you think it would cost per person, including the flights and everything? Any guesses? About 1,500 or 2,000 pounds. Okay, Pushpa Mataji is closed. Mm -hmm. Any other guesses? Okay, I will, I will reveal. You will only have to pay if you reserve it before end of January. Uh, the reason being is because Karthik is a super busy time. And if you want to book a decent accommodation, you want your flights to be taken care of. The early bird offer, if you book it before 31st of January, then it is only $12.99 per adult. $1,099 for a youth, which is 12 to 15, $8.99 for a child between 2 and 11, and $2.99 per infant. And the offer is um, applicable only if you book this before 31st of January. And what do you need to do to book is just pay 50% deposit upon booking. And then you pay the 30% before the end of May and then 20% upon the arrival at the retreat. So I just wanted to keep it flexible for the devotees and the cancellation policy. I mean, it's very difficult. Any packages, you don't really get cancellation. But I thought, OK, let me try to do something. So for some reason, if you have to cancel it, you can only cancel before the end of May. And in that case, you will you will get 25% of the total package price will be refunded to you. So let's say if you pay 50% by end of Jan, then the 25% will be returned back to you. And but after end of May, there will not be any refunds actually, because you know we, we will be for sure by then know that we will be traveling. So obviously, as I said, my plan is to really make this do it professionally next year and but i this year i want to do a trial as if i'm taking new people or you know sometimes some of you may have never been to vrindavan so I, I want to give everybody an opportunity so you have a real advantage at the same time it's not very costly and it's a good service for me to also do it and and, and take care of the devotees and take them to the dham so please contact me. You want to take a picture of this. Uh, this is the email address. This is my brand, Inner Yoga Retreats. I'm hoping to carry on this every year and take two or three retreats. So give me your blessings and also your support so I can try to do this nice service um, in uh, for the pleasure of Guru Maharaj, Shri Prabhupada and all the devotees. Um, so contact me and I can WhatsApp me on this number and I can send you the brochure separately. Uh, so you have the details with you. You can discuss with your family members. You still have 10 days to think about it and join us in this beautiful land of Vrindavan. So I'll stop there to see if anybody has any comments or any questions. Either about the retreat or what we discussed today. How does that sound? Does it sound exciting to anybody who's excited to go to Vrindavan this year? I am. Prabhu. I am. Yes. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, there are already so many devotees. Oh, Prabhu, I have one question. To give you a call. Oh my God. Okay. One second. There are devotees who are wanting to ask questions. So let's just go one by one. So Yashwini Sachi Mataji, and then we'll come to Manmohini Mataji. 
Yes, go ahead, Yashwini Sachi Mataji. You can unmute yourself. You're on mute at the moment. Hare Krishna. It's a beautiful package. Um, I'm absolutely um, excited about it. Thank you for organizing something like this. My pleasure, Mataji. Please pray that we all get to uh, you know, serve Srimati Radharani because that is her month. And to be in Karthik, I can't even imagine. I have had a very good fortune that at least in my 10 years of being in Krishna consciousness, I think I've been there at least eight years in Karthik. And I have gone around with senior sadhus. That's why I had this desire that, you know, it, it is a nice service. My work isn't looking that great. So I thought, let me take up this on the side and then gradually do this for, you know, and, and forget about my job in the future. That's what I'm hoping to do. So thank you so much. Yes, uh, we'll go to Manmohini Mataji and go to Pushpa Mataji after that. Thank you, Prabhuji. Um, when is the best time to give your call? So Mataji, if you want to call me, the best time to call me is call me tomorrow morning between uh, 10, 10 and 11.30 or 12 o'clock, Mataji. Thank you. Yeah. Just WhatsApp me so I can send you the brochure so you have it at your hand. Uh, um, just say that, uh, please send me the brochure and I'll forward the brochure to you. Thank you, Prabhuji. I'm so looking forward. Oh, you look very excited, Mataji. I so excited. Anyone who's not been to Vrindavan before here on the call? I haven't. I'm, I'm pretty excited. If I can get a place, I would love to go to Vrindavan. Oh, wow. That's amazing. So, Mataji, yeah, please do reserve your spaces early yeah. uh, because I can. there is only a certain number I can accommodate. Um, so, that's why before I open this to the rest of the devotee community, mm -hmm. I wanted to first give a chance to the devotees who first gave me the confidence. Devinam, this is something you, you love doing. Do it and we will come with you. And the next, I want to really make it a chat uh, yatra for all of you, you know. And if you just fill up with that, I'll be happy to do it, you know, like 60, 65, maximum 70 devotees. It, it, that'll be a nice yatra to go with, you know, um, to do dham. Yes. Okay, who had one, who had hand up? Anybody else? Sorry, can I quickly ask you one question about that term? Uh, what's the passenger locator form? So this this is a form which has been filled up these days because of the COVID. Like where will you be staying, etc. Oh, so I oh, do okay. by the time we get to October, because you see the COVID is peaking in India now, but it is it's hardly dangerous in India. Hardly very few deaths, but it is at the peak. So it will hopefully come down by March. You already starting to come down in some places. So I'm very hopeful. Even if there is something, it'll be a minor. And and I think because we are all vaccinated and booster. I am all prepared to stay positive and go for it. And, and in the event, obviously, if the airline doesn't operate, then we can travel on next year as a group and the Lakshmi will be there. That, that's something I want to mention. Because of the COVID, if the flight doesn't operate, then you can go only as part of the group. So we'll keep that aside and we can travel next year when things are better. So there is that peace of mind as well. Any other questions? Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Anyone else thinking to, to join this Yatra? I'm definitely thinking. Okay, wonderful, Thank Pushpa Mataji. So just message me on the WhatsApp, Mataji, and yeah. I'll send you the brochure. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Hare Krishna, Divyanam Prabhuji. Mita Mataji, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Yes, I would like to come. I've never been to Vrindavan. Oh, we would love to take you, Mataji. Please come. Please come. And then what we, yeah, we'll, we'll talk about the details later if there is, like, if you're not, if you're planning to just tra travel individual and if you're comfortable to share a twin room, because it's nice to have some association that way, you know, uh, it, it works out nicely as well. But that can be discussed uh, separately. That's not a problem. But we will be all together in a safe place, not only like less than 10 minutes walk from Krishna Balram Mandir. There will be a nice schedule for hearing and chanting and, and, and it'll be a nice protected environment for everyone. Any other questions or comments? Okay, great. So please uh, do consider. Uh, it's a great opportunity as, as a group. We can go together and really, uh, you know, pray to Srimati Radharani in this beautiful month and go deeper in our Krishna consciousness. It's a very special month to be in Vrindavan. And to get two weeks, like 15 days, and plus we get to go to Jaipur and Karoli this time, which is even exciting. So thank you, dear devotees. Um, I've been, I was working on this for the last couple of weeks, so I managed to put something together. So please pray that it all goes well and we have a great experience. So thank you for joining me on Chad and feel free to WhatsApp me and I'll send you the brochure. You have time to think about it at least 10 days and let me know before the end of January and the details I'll share with you on WhatsApp when you message me. 